your girl Monica Bowie here. We're in Atlanta, Georgia, in the building at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church for the premiere of Sinners Wanted. We're going to talk to all the stars tonight. Stay tuned. Hi, Miss Evans. How are you doing? I'm Monica with Meal Buzz. Good evening. Can you share with Meal Buzz tonight what you're most excited about with the movie premiere here? The fact that we're in Atlanta. I'm excited that we're in Atlanta. I've, I've, I've got to be honest. Um, and that we have moved from different locations. I'm from Baltimore. I'm from the DMV. And it's exciting to see how God is moving. It's all about the Lord and how he is opening doors for the message of Jesus Christ to reach all people. I have two millennials as my own children, and they make it very clear we have got to change. Those of us who have been in church a long time, we have got to embrace the millennials. They do things a little differently. And so we need to find ways to bring them into church, but in a way that embraces them and makes them feel accepted and not judged. Excellent. How are you doing tonight? What can we expect from the movie premiere? Oh, you're going to expect a lot. It's going to be different. It's controversial than the regular religious, faith-based shows and whatnot, or movies. It has a story to it. It has a story where everybody needs to be redeemed. Everybody needs to be forgiven for their sins. And just because they look that way or they or they act that way, they need to be redeemed. If they're coming in to see Christ for the first time, we got to redeem. We can't be the judge. We cannot be the judge. I love that. Only one that can be the judge is the man upstairs, and that's it. All right. Well, we look forward to hearing from you all tonight. Thank you. What's up? This is Terrell Hill, and if you're going to catch the buzz, catch the mill buzz. Hi, this is Ashley. If you're going to catch the buzz, make sure it's with mill buzz. So can you share with us a little bit about how you had to prepare for the role since you kind of played two different women? Two different women, yeah. right? So you have Gigi, who is this, you know, this prostitute who is, you know, a complete um, product of, unfortunately, her environment and her rough past in childhood. And then you have Ginger, who is the woman who, you know, is deep down inside yeah. that she, you know, has wanted to bring out. So it was um, kind of a challenge to go between the two, especially when you're filming and you're filming both of them. It's like, okay, you're Gigi, and now we're going to go film Ginger, you know, right behind it. Um, but it was so fun and so exciting, and um, I hope I did her justice. <laughs> well, I'm with Mill Buzz, which is a publication for millennials. So what can you share with millennials specifically about the message that this movie has to share and, like, what you guys hope it, it does for the world? So this is a message about unconditional love. Um, this is a story about redemption and judgment and forgiveness and all of these different things. And what I really hope, um, especially for my character specifically, is that people will be able to find the compassion for Gigi and then be able to take that outside and find it for others um, and then just kind of move from that. Awesome. So tell me about your role in the movie and what everyone should expect. Okay, so I play Pastor Leo in the movie. He falls in love with Ginger Clementine, the prostitute. Uh, so what you do, what you should expect from Pastor Leo is just, he's such a compassionate guy. He really sees her for all that she is and she see, he sees past all her cover-ups and all the, all the grime and everything that she goes through for who she really is. And um, if anything that people should really walk away from is to show a little bit more compassion to your fellow man. There's people outside the gates. There are people who, who don't have the love that we get who are outside the church who really deserve that love that we do. Awesome, awesome. I know a lot of you all were based in D.C. Can you tell me about how important it is to now see it go from D.C. to Atlanta? Oh, man, it's, it's so exciting to see it go outside of home. You know, it's, it's being from D.C., being from back home, you, you don't really have a, we don't have a, a, a large market there for film. So just to see this kind of like be a forefront for the film industry that we have back home, it's amazing to see. I'm so happy for this. Can you tell us why this film is important for millennials? This film is important for millennials because we don't have a lot of millennials of this generation who go to church. So it's important for people who are my age, millennial age, to, to see this film, to see how, to see how it's, it's, it's not always like how the norm of church is, like how the old school is. It's, it's different now. We we're all welcoming. Just, just come in. Just come in. Just be invited. We love you. I love you. That's why. Good luck. I can't wait to see the film. So what can, you, what can you share with us about how excited you are about seeing this film premiere happen here in Atlanta? I'm excited because first and foremost, you know, Clifton Powell, you know, who plays in this film, Centers One, and he plays my father on Saints and Centers on Bounce TV's number one show. So just being able to come and support him, 
that means a lot to me. So that's why we're here. <laughs> hey, what's up, y'all? It's Trey Chaney. Y'all know me from The Wire. Y'all know me from Saints and Sinners. But if you're going to catch the buzz, you got to catch it from Mill Buzz, baby. It's all love. Hi, I'm Tressa Azarel Smallwood. And if you're going to catch the buzz, it might as well be the Mill Buzz. What made you take on this film when the Jenkins brothers called you? Oh my goodness, I think number one, the content had me feeling like everybody needed to see this film from my from my children who are younger to my mom who's, who's older. Um, it's a movie that will change the landscape of how we view each other. Uh, we don't judge, you know, we, we tend to judge even though we know we shouldn't. You look at somebody and you go, oh she's cute. But the reality is you gotta look at somebody's heart. And this movie makes us look at that. We know that God's love is real. Um, that he's about forgiveness, and that's what we want everybody else to walk out of the theater understanding. I love that. And in this day and age, it's so hard to get millennials in church. So what is your vision for what this will do for millennials? So, so you know, obviously, we all know the statistics that it's very difficult to get millennials going to church now. But they will get on their phones. They will watch a movie. They will download an app. And so this movie, being able to be on digital platforms, whether it's a Netflix, a Hulu, we're able to attract them now. Um, also, what we did was the tagline for the movie is a pastor marries a prostitute. Right there, you can catch another market. Because typically, if you go with something that is a little bit more faith, like a faith-based log line, then you're not going to get the millennials attracted to it. Hey, it's Dr. Shanita Foster, and if you're going to catch the buzz, make sure you catch it with me on buzz. You're so active on social media, a great influence. What are you excited about with this film specifically for millennials? Um, I'm excited because it seems like millennials are kind of getting away from the whole church aspect. So when you have a movie that's able to speak to them in their way, uh, the name alone says a lot when it says sinners wanted. I think sometimes people often forget that we're all sinners. Uh, so I think the, the movie will be really good for them. Awesome. Hi, Pastor Brian. I'm Monica Bowie with Mill Buzz. How are you doing today? So this Mill Buzz is a publication for millennials. I am excited to hear your take on why this type of film is so important for millennials today. We need so much more of what it is that we're doing on tonight. It has now become a phrase of the culture, Netflix and chill, uh, that you got to be able to relax and release uh, what the culture needs. And I believe that this art form can meet so many more people than Christian television or Christian radio. Uh, this is uh, what KRS One called edutainment, uh, <laughs> that people can learn even while they're being entertained. Absolutely, thank yeah. you so much. Talk to me about why this film is so huge and important for our millennials today. Um, you know, I well, I we're we, we're millennials, and a lot of people that I'm around, they grew up and I, they were hurt by church. They had very bad experiences. They walked in church, they get judged, they get looked at a certain way. And it makes you not want to go certain places. And it's true, um, churches have done that to a lot of people. But what I wanted to do was really show, let people understand, just because a church hurts you, or just because a church was bad, doesn't mean God ain't good. And God is really good and he really loves you. And 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 Jesus didn't, every church, Jesus ain't agree with the, 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 the prophets and the Pharisees. Those are people he ain't agree with all the time. So we have to understand, don't let church define your relationship with God. you got to find a good church. Yeah. you got to find a good pastor. Yeah. And um, they we, are out here. They are, they are out here. Great churches, great pastors. And, you know, churches have problems just like any other organization has problems. Everybody's not perfect, but God is perfect. Yeah. And God loves us all. Well, you guys have to share with me a little bit about the genesis of the film. You guys chose to pick stars or people from D.C., the DMV. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you guys choose to do that? I mean, everybody's from the DMV, and the whole cast so, from the DMV. Yeah, There's a couple much. people outside of it, but the core, everybody's in D.C. Why was that important for you? Hometown that, thing. That's, that's hometown, home, time, hometown. It was our first, you know, budgeted film, yeah. and we felt that we wanted to start where we grew up, our roots. And we wanted to, to sprinkle it and have it grow all through the film, so it's there, you know. And, you know, it's just, it was, it was, a, it was, it was heartfelt for us. Hey guys, I'm Jimmy. And I'm Josh. And we're the Jiggis Brothers. Brothers. And listen, if you want to catch the buzz, catch it with Mill Buzz. Catch it with Mill Buzz. Boom. 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 Hey. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Y'all know what it is. I'm your man's Nassir Rahim. And if you're trying to catch the buzz, catch it with Mill Buzz. Yeah. And I play the role of Wolf. Awesome. Tell me about that role. Uh, pretty much Wolf is the man uh, in the neighborhood. He runs things and uh, he has control of a, a group of women. Pretty much they're pimp. And uh, he pretty much uh, runs things. Awesome. So what would you like to share with millennials specifically about this film? Uh, millennials, uh, I would like them to know that regardless of what type of person you are, God loves you unconditionally. 
And uh, this film is here to help people that don't pretty much understand uh, the aspect of coming to God. You know, it helps you to get closer to God because a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you know young kids they don't go to church. Yeah. So when they go to the movies and they see something like this, it helps them to get closer uh, in a, in a different way. All right, guys, it's a wrap with your girl Monica and Mill Buzz. Thank you for tuning in.